Hello listeners and viewers. Welcome to Kaduna State Ministry of Education radio and TV e-learning program designed for our SS3 and other students staying at home due to the coronavirus pandemic. The present administration under the able leadership of His Excellency Malam Nasur Ahmed El Rufai is positioned as always to ensure that under his leadership our students are not left behind in all areas of human endeavors especially education. Kaduna State is the center of learning. Therefore, we want to ensure that our students excel in their forthcoming examinations and beyond. Students and other learners at home are given this opportunity in order to continue learning as education is a continuous process. Different subjects will be taught in this program to assist students to perform excellently in the forthcoming senior school certificates examination being conducted by NECO and WAEC as soon as schools reopen. Teachers making presentations will always provide their names and phone numbers during each presentation and they can be contacted for questions, further explanations and or clarifications. The following numbers and contacts can also be reached for expression of any concern or observation. 090-865-0054 090-865-0054 68362072 our website is www our email education at kdsg.gov.ng or education.kdsg at gmail.com our youtube channel ministry of education kaduna state our twitter handle at kaduna underscore moe or our Facebook page, Ministry of Education, Kaduna State. Stay safe, stay at home, and learn well. Thank you, happy listening, and happy viewing. Good day, our students and other learners. I hope you have enjoyed the day. My name is Ibrahim Zakari. I am to teach you history today. Already, we have treated some empires. One from Central Sudan, that is Kanem Borno Empire, and the other one in the Guinea Forest, that is Oyo Empire. We have treated their or, uh, historical origin, their system of administration, and factors that led to the rise of these empires. And we have seen the achievement of their rulers and factors that led to the fall of this empire. Today also in our lesson, our topic is Benin Empire. Under this topic, we are going to look at the historical origin of Benin, Factors that led to the rise of Benin and then the reign of the early dynasty. If I say dynasty, I mean the ruling family of that empire. So the first ruling family known as the Ojisos, we are going to look at their reign down to the arrival of Oramian from Ife. Then we will wind up by discussing the achievements of some of their prominent rulers like Eweka, Ewedo, and Iwari. Then we stop there. The historical origin of these people was uncertain some historians argue that the Benin people have not migrated from anywhere. Their migration took place within, not from without. Whereby others stated that they have migrated from the East. Again, my student, whenever we made mention East, we are referring to the Arab countries. If you say West, we are referring to 
European countries. So these people trace their origin according to a certain tradition from the East. After long wandering, they settled in Yoruba land at a place called Ife. From there, Benin was scouted. That is to say, when they searching for a while, they organize or assign some people to go and find out an empty land for them, suitable for them to live there. Why? Because they have made the original aborigin, that is the inhabitants of Ife, the Yorubas. And they were not willing to stay with them. So they, started, they decided to assign some people to go and scout a new land for them. So Benin was scouted. So they moved there. Before we look at the reign of the dynasty of the Ojisos, we are going to look at the factors that led to the rise of this great empire of the Guinea forest. Factors that led to the rise of Benin. Number one, influence of their Yoruba neighbors on the West who had centralized form of government. The culture, custom, and political inclination of these people towards establishing a strong, well-centralized government was influenced by their Yoruba neighbors. That is an important factor that led to the rise of that empire. It is part of their life to live in a well-centralized political institution. Unlike their southeastern neighbors or the eastern neighbors like the Ijos, who practice the house system in Boni, the house system, Ekpe society in Calabar, or the Amala, that is the elders, village heads in Igbo. They prepare to live under a strong monarch surrounded by court officials. Well centralized system of administration. They have been influenced by their Western neighbors, the Yorubas. Secondly, there was industrial skill and craft work of the Benins. The Benins people were very skillful in weaving, sculpture, moldering, blacksmithing, smelting, and what have you. For that reason, they have attracted long distance traders to come to Benin and trade with them. It makes the empire to become very prosperous. This is another important factor. Number three, outstanding and very effective army. The Benin people established a strong army, but to your own surprise, this army were very effective. If you compare their army with that of the Yoruba people, you see there is a difference. The Yorubas establish a strong cavalry forces. If I say cavalry forces, I am referring to soldiers who fought on a horseback. Why? Because they have obtained weapons and horses through trans-Saharan trade. Similarly, the Benin people also, they had access to trans-Saharan trade, but they refused to establish a cavalry forces. All they were foot soldiers, infantry, but they were able to defend the empire from foreign invention, that is external aggression. Their western neighbors, the Yorubas, failed to attack Benin. 
Why? Because they were afraid of their well-trained soldiers, always ready to go into action if the need arise. This army also were used for imperial expansion. If we said imperial expansion, we are referring to a process whereby the king will lie or will attempt to expand the area of his jurisdiction, to conquer the neighbors, to bring them under his own control, politically and economically, with the promise of paying that overlord, the conqueror, a certain amount of money at the end of every year. We call that payment as annual tribute. Annual tribute, that is yearly payment of money in order to buttress the fact that we have really accepted you as our own overlord. No rebellion. We will never ever throw our allegiance to you. We accepted your domination. We live peacefully. That is what we want. Number four, Benin was the terminal of an important trans-Saharan trade. Benin exported ivory and paper to northern market. The empire was a meeting point, if you say a terminal, of northern market. The northerners arrived there, the Yorubas arrived there, then the people of the Niger Delta also, from the coastal area, moved there to trade. So there was this interrelationship, intergroup relation, even before the arrival of the British here in Nigeria. Various tribes intermingled with one another. So they exported ivory and pepe to the northern market. At the same time, another factor, the Europeans also purchased important items from the Benins, like ivory. If we say ivory, my student, we are referring to elephant teeth, elementary, uh, distinct name for it. The animal teeth is known as ivory. Ivory, pepe, woman slave, leopard skin, dyed cutting cloth, fresh stones, etc. Why woman slave here? The Europeans only purchased woman slave and other items because it was prohibited. According to Benin tradition, to sell an Edo man as a slave, it was not allowed. If you want to sell a male slave, that slave should have to be a captive or prisoner. If that slave was, an, was not a war prisoner, it was not allowed for you to sell that person. It is prohibited to sell an Edo man to the outsiders. That is the reason they only sell woman slave. Another one, that is number six factor, well-defined system of secession. Unlike the Yoruba people, their system of secession was based on the decision of the Oyomisi. If an Alaikun should die today, his eldest son, the Aremo, has to die with him, to escort him accompanied him to the ancestral home. It was the duty and responsibility of the seven king makers, the Oyomisi, to make their own selection. Unlike in Benin, it was not like that. 
the Uzama, the seven king makers, had no right to make any selection. It was the duty and responsibility of the Oba to appoint his eldest son as a day Khan, that is heir apparent. Heir apparent is a Greek word. Heir apparent, that is awaiting ruler. Awaiting ruler, successor. If I die, I, Mr. A, if I died, my son, Mr. B, should be the next ruler. So the Rama have limited power. You compare them with the ne their neighbors, the oil Messi. Lastly, as I have explained, they have established a well-centralized system of administration in Benin. All right, now we are going to look at the reign of the first ruling dynasty, that is the Ogiso dynasty, the Ogiso ruling family. Oral traditions speak of an early dynasty of Benin kings. They were the Ogisos. They ruled before 14th century. They ruled before 14th century. 13 and above. But there was no exact date of their ruling, the Ogisos. It is difficult to place exact date on the period when these kings ruled. The first ruler of the Ogisos, the first monarch of the Benin people, was Obagado. Obagado was the first Oba of Benin. And he belonged to the Ogiso dynasty, not the Orion dynasty. And the last Oba was Owodo. Ten monarchs ruled. Two were said to be women, queens, whereby the remaining eight were kings, the Obas. This uh, Owodo had problem before his demise, that is before his death. He had several wives, but only one among them conceived a male child. So the priest pronounced to him that that son should be executed. If that son was executed, the remaining wives will give birth to male children. That is, they will give birth to sons. But Owodo refused to, uh, to follow their instruction. He failed to comply with their needs. So he banished his son to Ugoton village, which later transformed to Guato Fort. So the people were not happy the people were not happy about what Owodo did, so they rebelled against him. After Owodo, then two unknown people emerged as administrators. Ivian and Ogiamwe, they acted as administrators ruling Benin. They were not descendant of the original uh, this thing, founder of that Ojiso dynasty. They were only powerful people. Since Owodo, as the last Ojiso king, died, then these people emerged from nowhere. They wanted to rule Benin by all means. One was just a mere administrator ruling. Then the other one also was just a mere administrator ruling. But they rule in turn. At last, Ivian 
wanted to assign his son since he had a male son, but his rival only conceived a female child. So he planned to install his son to be the next Oba of Benin. The people refused to accept this uh, plan. They rebelled against him. Since then, there was an interregnum. What is an interregnum? An interregnum is a situation whereby there is no single ruler controlling an ins uh, a political institution. There was no a single administration headed by a single person. That is an interregnum. So people were annoyed. For that reason, they assigned some ambassadors to go to Ife and meet Odudua. They went to Odudua and asked him that he should send his son to come and rule Benin. Oramian sent his son, uh, Odudua sent his son Oramian to the people of Benin to be their king. When Oramian went there, he married a daughter of a native chief of Ego, and that lady conceived a child known as Eweka. Later on, after some time, Aramia renounced his office, remarking that Benin was a land of vexation. What is vexation? That is land of trouble. He said, how oh, these people? Why? Because he was tired of their behavior of insubordination. They were not loyal to him. Why? Because they were regarding him as a stranger, an outsider. An outsider. They were just regarding him as an outsider. So they were not all that loyal to him. He stated that. Only a native of Benin can rule Benin effectively. For that reason, all my people, I am leaving you. So he left and went back and went back to Yoruba land. When he went there, he founded a new settlement known as Old Oyo. He established, he established a ruling dynasty there the Alapinate, whereby here also he established another uh, distant ruling dynasty, the Eweka dynasty. Now we are going, uh, going to look at the, some achievement of Eweka, Ewedo, and Ewari the Great. Eweka the first, he was the son of Oranyang or Oramian, he established the second dynasty. He ruled for a very long period of time. He extended trade relationship with their neighbors. That is the people of the Niger Delta, the Yorubas, and the Northerners who came to settle at a place very close to a uh, distant Ida under his own tributary area. And, uh, this Eweka, he was the first person to create the office of state councillors known as the Uzama, the seven king makers. But they have limited power, as I have explained. The next important ruler we are going to look at his achievement was Ewedo, the idolator. He was the grandson of Eweka. He has great interest in religion and magic. He was very fanatical in terms of traditional religion. He appointed medicine man as his chief priest to supervise and establish art called shrines. He asked that uh, priest to serve as his own personal uh, distinct priest. 
and to serve as his personal advisor, and at the same time to control and influence people to move to various shrines they have established for consultation. At the same time to inculcate the belief that the office of the Oba was sacred and the Oba was a divine uh, distinct sheep. Somebody who has been chosen by God. He built a prison for the criminals. He crushed the rebellion of Iguamwe. This Iguamwe was another Iguamwe, not the first one who acted as administrator. But this second person opposed the position of the other. So uh, Ewedo had to fight with this man and crush his rebellion. He started the custom of chief standing in the presence of their Oba. Before they used to sit down. That sitting down with the Oba, uh, that sitting down with the Oba by the palace chiefs developed superiority feeling uh, that they were somehow parallel with the Oba. So from there, a widow asked them that, on no account should you sit when I am sitting. You should have to stand up in order to remove or eradicate that superiority feeling in the mind of the palace chiefs. The last one is Iware the Great, who ruled from 1440 to 1473. He transformed Benin Kingdom to an empire. He was the first person who transformed the kingdom. He imposed strong government on Benin and her newly acquired territory. He quelled over ambition chiefs, that is the palace chiefs, who had challenged the previous obas. He introduced another association of chiefs, the town chiefs, to rival the palace chiefs. Before we have the Uzama, the palace chiefs. Now, Iwari created another institution, the town chiefs, in order to curtail the superiority and popularity of the palace chiefs. He stopped internal quarrels and maintained law and order. And he assigned the leader of the town chief, Iyashare, as the commander-in-chief of the army. So, my student, now I will wind up here. I will give you an assignment to attend. Number one, outline the main events of the reign of Yuare the Great. Number two, give an account of the early history of Benin up to the arrival of Prince Oramian from Ife. I will repeat. Number one, outline the main events of the reign of Iwari the Great. Number two, give an account of the early history of Benin up to the arrival of Prince Oramia. Reference book, number one, Peoples and Empire of West Africa to 1800. T.A. Osai. Number three, West African History by S.A. Oni. Number four, A History of West Africa, 1000 to 1800 by David Son Bassi. My name is Ibrahim Zakari. If you have any observation, comment, or question you send through this uh, phone number 070-8420-3260. I will repeat. My name is Ibrahim Zakari. My phone number is 070-8420-3260. Stay home, stay safe, keep learning. Thank you.